Hey, what is going on guys? This is ZK and welcome to the beginning of a tutorial series here where I'm going to teach you guys how to script um, in World at War to, for custom zombies maps and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I want to start out a little bit here with a bit of a disclaimer. I just want you guys to know that I am not a professional at this. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not anywhere near the, the elite or anything like that. Um, basically, what I want to tell you is that I don't have any formal training in this. I don't have any formal training in scripting at all, any kind of programming, that type of stuff. This is all self-taught, and because of that, I may have some definitions wrong or different things like that, but I should be able to explain uh, the functionality of things to you guys. I'm going to start this tutorial series um, by talking about syntax and variables and just the very very basic knowledge um, and then the next few videos we'll talk about some more um, in-depth things so you guys can start like actually scripting and setting up your own basic functions and then we'll move into more um, I don't say quote unquote complicated stuff like spawning models or working with AI and stuff like that um, and I will do some more specialized things that way but these first few videos are just going to be the very basics of how to get started scripting I know a lot of you guys maybe be looking at scripts when you're working on your maps you open up the GSC files to paste in some tutorial or something and you're just like overwhelmed at all this everything that's going on and all the layout and stuff I'm gonna try to help you um, like understand that and it's really not that complicated once you learn how it goes so without further ado I think we'll get in to this video um I should start out by saying that the uh, Call of Duty World at War uses basically oops uh, let's fix that uses basically C++ which is a programming like a scripting language type of a thing um it's it's there's a, a, a few uh small differences um to C++ it's not exactly this there's a few little things differently but it's pretty much the same thing um, this is very similar to C Sharp also, so if you guys know C Sharp, I think Unity uses that a lot, that Unity uh, game engine. You can, if you know C+, plus, you know, or excuse me, C Sharp, then it shouldn't be too hard for you to figure this out. Um, so yeah, without further ado, basically the whole um, setup behind scripts is um, functions. It's a, you set up functions, and then you call the function, and the function does what it's supposed to do, and that's how you get the results in your script um, in the game. Uh, for doing various tasks. So let's say that I wanted to make a function right now. So this is the very basic syntax we're going to talk about, the syntax of the World at War uh, programming thing. So if I was going to set up a function, you can name it whatever. Oops. Oh, man, I'm, I have a new keyboard here, so I'm trying to get used to it. Oh, man, that was terrible. Okay, so I have my function here. Um, you... One thing you should know is this is not case sensitive, so you don't have to worry about, you know, titling everything like this. And then, like, if I call it, use my function, I could do it like this later on. So, if as long as I do that, <laughs> my apologies if I have a typo, I'll try to make sure that's um, not a problem for you guys. Anyway, so yeah, this is how you set up a function. So, that's what a function looks like. Um, this is basically kind of like the title on your, if you're writing a paper, um, the best way to describe this is this is like a title. So this is how you do a title. This right here is what you put at the end of a function, whether it's the beginning or whether you're calling a function later. Don't worry about calling functions. We'll talk about that later. This is the first step. And then what you do is the entire function is, is enclosed in these brackets underneath. So then um, this, this one here that's turned to the right basically is the opening and this one's to the end and lets the, lets the compiler know that uh, everything inside of those is your function. So blah, 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 this is all in your function. You can hit enter and blah, 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 this is also in the function, da, 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 like so. And this lets it know that, um, that it's the end of the function. So if I was going to do two functions, I would do this, and boom, then it knows that, okay, this is all inside of function one, and this is all inside of function two, okay? So that that's kind of the very, very basic, uh, setup of a function. You have the name of your function right here, then you have it enclosed with these, and there's you can actually put stuff inside of here, but we'll talk about that later. You don't have to, and you don't have to worry about it right now. And then it's enclosed in these brackets. And that's really all there is to the syntax. It's not that hard um, when you really get down to it. We'll talk about a little bit more of it here as we move into variables. Variables are basically um, like a uh, Ah, oh, man, it's hard to explain. They're basically variables. If you've ever been algebra, math, those types of things. So if you wanted to say a equals one, that's a variable, okay? So you have a variable right here. That's what variables are. They're just basic statements saying that something equals something else. So for example, 
in the syntax of C++, every time you do a variable or an almost every command, you have to put a semicolon after it. That lets the compiler know that, okay, so we've got this command, blah, 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 stop. And then it goes to the next command. So then the next line would be like B equals two right there. Then it knows that these are two separate commands and they don't go like this. Because if you did that, you would get a bad syntax error. Okay, so we'll go with that. A equals one and B equals two. They both have to have the semicolons after that. Pretty much every every line that you'll ever type in this has to have um, a semicolon after it. Besides a few, there are a few exceptions. Okay, I will tell you that. And we'll talk about those again in a later video, like while while functions, or not while, um, like uh, um, if or else statements or things like that. But we'll, we'll talk about those later. Okay, so the basic, basic uh, syntax and variables. This is basically what a function looks like. And it can get a lot more complicated than this when you start adding things in. Something else that you guys should note about variables is that regular variables like this can only be used once you define them inside of say this my function we'll just call it my function one because it's easier to, to uh, work with once we get a second one in here so with my function one if I call that a equals one inside of this function then in let's say I have uh, function two down here my function two and I get rid of this and I try to say you know do something with a like say that I wanted to move a to something whatever okay so if I was to do that then I would get an un like an unknown variable or like a like a unknown uh, function or unknown object I can't remember exactly what the error is called but it would be an unknown something because a is only defined up here then once it's only defined inside of these brackets I can't use it here okay if I did want to use a somewhere else then what I could do is we could change it and then put the variable under something. So for example, level.a, then that would be used because then you can call it anywhere. And boom, then I would just do that. And there we go. Now I can use this variable because it's been, been defined under the level that I'm playing on. So if this, if this seems a little overwhelming to you, like you're like, what on earth did this guy just say? This seems really confusing. It's, re it's really not hard, guys. You just got to understand the basic function, the fun functionality here of how this this stuff is all compiled. I should tell you that spaces do not matter. Okay, when it comes to syntax, you can do this if you wanted to, just like that, and the whole thing would still function exactly the same way. The reason why we do we enter a lot and use tabs and stuff the, um, is only because it's easier to read this way, right? So then I could even do this, like that. It doesn't matter. I could put it there. It doesn't matter. It's just easier to read like this. So you don't have to worry about, oh no, did I get enough number of spaces between here like this? That also works. You can do that. You could do this. I mean, you could do that. You could do that. Okay. The reason why I set it up like this is because it's e a lot easier to read. Okay. So that's basically the, the, the basics of syntax and variables, guys. I know that some of you maybe more experienced scripters are looking at this like, wow, this guy knows nothing about scripting. He's really basic. No, I'm just going over the very basics for those of you guys who have no idea what you're doing with scripting. And I, I really want to help you guys understand this because um, it, scripting adds so much spice into a map. If you can put on custom functions and and you can set up custom things that, that do all kinds of stuff that you know other people didn't make that you made yourself. It's a lot more fun um, to get into mapping when you can get into all these these vast different areas of how to do things. So let me know, guys, if you have any suggestions on like if I forgot something, if I didn't make something clearer to you guys in this video. The next video we're going to be talking about like if else functions and where we can actually get into doing something with these variables rather than just being able to declare them. Because right now I'm sure you're looking at this and thinking okay yeah this function is going to do absolutely nothing and that's absolutely correct because it won't do anything um, we need to incorporate some new tools that we'll learn about in the next video in order to make our function actually begin to do stuff and I'll show you how to create variables that grab things out of your map file so that you can use them like triggers or models or script brush models or things like that 
Um, so anyway, guys, let me know in the comments if you're going to like this series and if you think that it's going to help you out because I really hope it does. And leave suggestions if I didn't make something clear or if I forgot something. Please let me know. Again, I'm not a professional at this. I'm just a guy who learned how to do it by trial and error. Okay, And you are going to have to learn how to do it by trial and error too to some degree. But I'm hoping to make your life a little bit less of a headache when it comes to scripting. So thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. This is ZK signing off.